Roger Fortson, 23-year-old senior airman, fatally shot down in his home by police officers. Let's talk about it. Praise to the Most High Yah Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Spiritful episode. Man, today I'm back at it in them trenches handling that kingdom business. Man, it's very uh, sad and unfortunate what happened to Roger Fortson, you know, a 23-year-old Israelite, you know, senior airman, which is the pay grade of E4, pretty much gunned down in his home while practicing the Second Amendment did not have his firearm in a threatening manner. And soon as he opened the door, the police officer saw who he was, saw the firearm, it was open season. And uh, I'll tell you, man, sad as this stuff is, it's gonna continue to happen. It's going to continue to happen. You know, it was very criminal on behalf of an officer who's supposed to be uh, a standard bearer of the law to act in such a way. And we can only, only wait and be patient to see what the outcome is. A lot of the information is redacted uh, due to... Roger Fortson being a, a military member and then them trying to protect the investigation, you know, not trying to disrupt the investigation. And uh, the police gave a very, you know, vague statement as they always do. We're gonna look into it. Um, but after watching the, the funeral service for Roger Fortson, uh, given by Jamal Bryant, you know, what we saw was just another uh, another racially charged religious message that gets people up and makes them want to march, makes them want to, you know, to get out and protest. But I'll tell you this, man, the Most High Yah and his word is undefeated. The word says, come out from among them and be ye separate come out from among them and be ye separate. The book is written, majority of the book is written on behalf of a Israelite uh, Semitic people. You know, an Israelite lineage. A Hebraic lineage. And you need to be asking yourself how many times are you going to witness stuff like this? before you actually obey what the word says. You see where I'm driving now? I'm driving by pastures. You know, when will you come out? Because when we look at a lot of these incidents, they take place in the city. They take place in the city. And I commute to the city every day. And I live in a small town, but we still have a city. And I live about 15 minutes outside of the city, outside of police jurisdiction. Man, my nearest neighbor is about a quarter of a mile away. We don't get police activity out here. We don't have to worry about the same lawlessness and rebellion that goes on in the city because we're not amongst them. You might want to think long and hard about where you are uh, laying your head, where you are living, because 
there's so much lawlessness that goes on in the city. And every day it's like a breath of fresh air when I drive uh, past that city limit sign coming home knowing that man, man, it's truly peace out here. The Most High Yah uh, intended for us not to live all shacked up and cooped up on one another. And it, it, it's a choice you're gonna have to make. You know, I was raised and reared in the city. You know, for most of my adult life lived in the city. And it wasn't until raising uh, my kids and probably about till two, three years ago that I realized, man, we lived in a nice neighborhood, which you would consider the American dream, but there was just so much lewdness going on. So much criminal activity, nice neighborhood, houses, uh, three, 400, half a million. You know, we had a, we had a, 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 a sexual predator two doors down. Didn't know when we moved in, we had raging, uh, flaming people, if you know what I mean, walking up and down the streets, holding hands. So much lewdness, so much lawlessness, so much rebellion. The word of the Most High Yah is undefeated when he says, come out from among them. And everybody has the word, but everybody's not a doer of the word. And you got an opportunity to look at this case because there was a, uh, a, a black lieutenant, army lieutenant, who experienced uh, some stuff not long ago. And there's video footage and we didn't hear anything about it. This stuff is gonna continue to happen. And when you read in the book and it talks about the last days, it tells you difficult times are going to come. It doesn't say because you play religious that everything's gonna be better. No, it says difficult times will come. Perilous times. And that's why I say this stuff is gonna get worse. Man, see, when you live in the wilderness, when you live uh, set apart from all of the foolishness, what happens is there's a change of dynamic. The police don't have no jurisdiction where I live. They won't even come outside of city limits. And you're not even gonna, uh, nine times out of 10, you're not even gonna get a sheriff to come out here unless uh, a death has taken place. But for all of these noise disturbances and all of that, you don't have to worry about that uh, living in the country, living set apart, living in the wilderness. There's great protection in the wilderness. But I tell you, man, a lot of people have conformed to the lifestyle of Babylon. You know, if anybody comes out to our property, it's normal for people to answer the door with a gun. People have no trespassing signs on their yard, Second Amendment on their yard, signs letting you know, hey, if you come past this property and don't have official business, guns will be drawn. Man, it's nothing for me to walk outside of my garage and hear my neighbors shooting. Not shooting in violence, shooting because people have ranges, gun ranges at their house. That's just a part of country living. I don't have to worry about all these strange knocks on the doors uh, because we don't get door-to-door -door salesmen and stuff like that like people get in these neighborhoods. You see what I'm saying? You got to you got to have when you obey the word, there's a certain level of protection that comes with that obedience and your faithfulness. And one thing I didn't hear uh Jamal Bryant say, which he could have elaborated on, was come out from among them. Be ye separate. These laws that these constitutional laws, man, they were not written for a Israelite Hebraic Semitic people. That's just the bottom line. And we're gonna see this uh, play out. Do you honestly think that these laws, you know, these amendments, these, these constitutional rights were written on your behalf? And we constantly see, you know, this stuff fail people, fail the Israelites and you're steady trying to change a system that wasn't designed for you. This is a Roman Greco system. That's why they have the eagle everywhere. It's symbolic for 
the Roman Empire. You thought it meant freedom. No, it's the Roman Empire. Go back and look up the significance of the eagle and the Roman Empire and the deities uh, associated with it. You know, most people don't even know that the Constitution still allows for slavery. You've probably never went back and, and, and read the different amendments and them uh, pretty much allowing slavery for uh, the purpose of the, the, the prison industrial complex. I'm telling you, man, there's a difference between playing religious and there's a difference between being a, a doer of the word, striving to live righteous and set apart. This is just uh, another one of the plagues and heartaches that you're gonna deal with uh, if you don't remove yourself. You see what I'm saying? The Romans operate based upon uh, their set apart worldly laws and we are in exile to that right now. But the Most High Yah gave us a set of laws, a Israelite Semitic, you know, Hebraic people, which is Torah. And Paul, being a teacher of the gospel, he was teaching, being a Roman, he was trying to teach them the ways of righteousness, teaching the heathens. And oftentimes they, they, they met Paul with great hatred. I'm here today to tell you, man, to come out from among them. You still got an opportunity. You still got a choice. And a lot of you think that uh, when it comes to wicked and rebellion, the uniform matters. That was an Air Force brother, a 23-year-old Air Force brother, you know, senior airman. And we've seen this before where, where service members, whether they be black, white, are, are, are taken advantage of. In this case, we've seen it make the news where, where black service members are taken advantage of. I tell you, man, I go to work, you know, in the town, at the base, and then I get gone. And I'm not coming back into town unless I got uh, official business to handle. I'm not dwelling uh, amongst the lawless where all the rebellion goes on that we read about in the last days. I wanna be in the wilderness. You wanna be in the wilderness. See, we gotta get out as black people, we gotta get out of the mindset of just making emotionally charged statements that makes everybody want to march and everybody want to protest, but who's going to be about that action? When are you going to stop the cap and actually, and actually doggone, uh, set yourself free, set your family free so you don't have to uh, deal with this pain? This stuff is going to continue happening. And it's sad, man. Anytime a life is lost, uh, it is sad. Doesn't matter whose life it is, it is sad. And you have uh, you have so much discord and lawlessness amongst the heathens that this stuff doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. But the book gave you an instruction. If you know what I mean, the book gave you an instruction uh, to have a certain level of protection, but you're gonna have to obey it. There's not gonna be any protection where there's no obedience. Closer to Yah Ministries, kicking that thing, gun barrel straight. Wow.